Okay, focus. Okay, we're typing it into the calculator. Okay, so here's the plan. Um, with the mock exam tomorrow, we were going to do two days of review. We're just flip-flopping them because we ran out of copies. We're going to review calculator stuff today. We'll do some free responses tomorrow. You've learned, hopefully, everything that you were supposed to learn along the way. Nothing else is new. Okay? So you are typing it in. Do we remember how to get the fraction thingy? Yes. Okay, what is it? Yes, good. So alpha y equals. Oops, that's not the right one. Okay, and then n over d. Square root x on top, 1 plus x plus x up to the 3. Okay, type it in. Okay, then, now on the AP test, they're not going to tell you sketch the graph. Okay, that's me telling you to sketch it so that we can draw stuff on it. So after you've done it, you're going to sketch it. Okay, my graph is zoomed weird. How do you fix it? Okay, zoom and then pick the standard window, okay, which is 6. Okay, that's not a very good window, so we're going to now zoom back in. Okay, there we go. Okay, little tiny graph. I'm going to uh, modify my window. I'm going to make it go to maybe like 6 just so I can see more of it. Okay, I think on the AP test it gave you an interval, and I just didn't copy it down. What? Did I type this right? Square root x, 1 plus x plus x cubed. What? Okay, well, this is less exciting than intended. Okay, here's your graph. Okay, looking at the table, it looks like it starts at 0 at positive... Looking at the y value, it starts at 0, 0. Okay, and then it looks like it goes up and then down. Now, when I scroll through the y values, okay, just look at mine for a second. So it starts at 0, it kind of goes up, but then all these e's pop up. What are the e's? Okay, that's like basically 0. If you have a number e to the negative 4, e to the negative 5, that's like that many zeros in front of your number. Okay, so it asymptotes towards zero. Now, could you have concluded without a calculator that this asymptotes towards zero? Using your rules. Is it Bobo, Botner, Betsy? Okay, I have a square root on top. I have an x cubed on bottom. Which one's bigger? Bigger on bottom. So we know it goes to zero anyway, even without looking at the calculator. Okay, it says uh, sketch where we have critical numbers. We don't have any. Okay, the reason why is because this graph never hits the x-axis. Okay, so part B says, what is the x-coordinate of the point of inflection on the graph? Okay, now, this is not a graph of f. This is a graph of f prime. So if I want a point of inflection on f, what am I looking for in f prime in my calculator? Where what happens? Where the slope changes. So put in x. Now, do we remember how to find it? That's where my POI is. Okay, second trace, which option do I pick? The max. Okay, and then remember, I can use my arrows if I want to. I'm going to just type in 0 as my left bound, and then maybe 1 as my right bound. But if you don't want to type in specific numbers, you can arrow it as well. Okay, then it says yes, I'm going to skip it. It looks like it occurs at 0.473, which is this one. Now, let's say that it asks you to justify. You'd say because f double prime, the slope of f prime, changes sign. Okay? All right, part C says, when is the graph of f increasing and concave down? Okay, for f to be increasing, where does my graph have to be? Above the x-axis. Very good, because I need f prime to be positive. But then if I want f to be concave down, what else am I looking for? Okay, a negative slope. Very good. Now, looking at your graph, we can see, okay, obviously I didn't graph this before I put these questions on it. 
Okay, but it's above the whole time. When does it have a negative slope? From 0.473 until when? Infinity, right? Because it keeps going towards zero forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. So we'd say from 0.473 till infinity. Okay? Part D says f of 4 is 6. Find the value of f of 10. You might say that you have f of 4. And if you're finding f of 10, you might say you want it. So what would you do? Version B. Very good. What do I start with? f of 10 equals f of 4 plus. And then I do the integral from 4 to 10. Now, what do I put on the inside if these are normal f's? It would be f prime. Remember that whatever's inside the integral should always be the derivative of what's on the outside of the integral. Okay? Then we already know that f of 4 is 6. And then that part we're going to use the calculator to do. Now, when I try to integrate this in my calculator, watch. Okay, I do a second trace. I go down to the integral 7, I try to start it at 4, and then I try to go till 10. It's going to tell me an error, because why? Remember how I zoomed my graph in? Okay, I can't, I can't integrate past where my graph ends. So in this case, you can either make your graph bigger, or just use Math 9, which is what I'm going to use. Okay, then 4 is the bottom, 10 is the top. So remember, your window is going to restrict what you're allowed to use in your integral. So 4 to 10 is 0 0.0598. Add that to 6. 6.0598. Okay. Then it says to find the value of the integral f of 0. This is another version b. f of 0 equals f of 4 plus the integral from 4 to 0 f prime of x dx. Now one thing I just want to address here is that is this backwards? Yes, your calculator knows that. So you can type it in exactly like it is here or you can fix it and put a negative in the front. It doesn't matter which way you do it. Your calculator can do backwards integrals just fine as if it was doing a forward. So I'm going to second enter, pull up what I just typed in, and then I'm going to put my 0 on top, my 4 on the bottom, just like it's written on my paper. Okay, and notice that it's going to know that it needs to be negative because it's backwards. Okay? Now, if I'm going to add that to 6, I need to remember that really it's going to subtract it, right? So it comes out to be 5.2819. So this would be 6 plus negative 718, which is, hi, thank you, 5.2819. Good. Easy. You remember these things? Good. Turn the page. Wow. I just totally missed that. Um... Okay, I want you to do whatever you can do on number two. I'm going to come bring you a candy. Okay, pretend it's the real AP test. Some of it's hard, some of it's not. So if you can't do part A, skip it, go on to part B. Do you need your calculator? Yes, you need your calculator to do it. So if it says sketch the graph of G prime, is that G prime? <laughs> That's G. So what do you need to do first before you can graph? Find g prime. Very good. So if this is g, then I need to find g prime of x. What do you do when you take the derivative of a function that already has an integral? You just, loop. Remember, you just switch the letter. So instead of a sine t squared, now it's a sine x squared. And you're only going to do it on negative 1 to 3. Okay, and then from there, you should be able to answer those questions using your calculator, okay? And you can work with a friend if you want. Olivia. Who usually says, are you? Crystal. Um, 
She's the one too. She's fake. Separate your friendship. She's fake. Oh, they still work together, but they work with each other. Probably like a I mean interesting. Uh-uh. Who's that?
20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 
So remember, it was from 0 to x, which is now 2.5, and then of sine t squared dt. Now remember, your calculator doesn't care if you use a t or an x. Doesn't matter, you have an x button, you're going to use the x, but when you write it down, it should be a t. Okay, so second quit to get out of my graph. Math 9 is the integral. Okay, 0 to 2.5. And then sine of x squared dx. Okay, all this stuff you should mostly know how to do pretty easily. Okay, so 0.4305. Okay, that's my y value. So I have my point. What else do I need? I need my slope. And remember that the slope is g prime of 2.5. That is what's already in my calculator. So remember here, I'm going to do alpha trace, y1 at 2.5, easy, easy, and it'll plug it in for me. So my slope is negative 0.0331. Okay, then from there, you can write your equation of your tangent line. Oh, my. Yes. I've shown you that. You crackhead. <laughs> what the heck? Okay, <laughs> yes, you just do alpha trace and then whatever, like if you wanted to plug in pi, you would just do parentheses pi. It'll plug in whatever you want. Okay, look, it loves to plug in for you. Okay, so y minus 0 0.4305 equals negative 0 0.0331 x minus 2.5. All right, then, next part E says, is your tangent line over or under the actual value around 2.5? That is a question for what? Concavity. concavity, yes. Now, am I looking at the concavity of this graph? No, I'm looking at the, the slope of this graph, right? So, um, I'm going to take the derivative, which is option 6 here, at 2.5. And I'm going to see if it comes out to be positive or negative. And I can see here, what's my slope? That means my original graph would have been concave what? Up. And if my graph is concave up, where's my tangent line? Below. Good. So I would write g double prime at 2.5 equals 4.9972 greater than 0. Then g of x is concave up. around x equals 2.5. So tangent line is below. Sure. Okay, so I'm in my calculator mode. I'm looking for the slope. So hit second trace and then pick the dy dx option. That's your slope. And then it'll ask you where you want your slope. You type in 2.5 enter. Also keep in mind that let's say that I wanted the slope, guys, uh, second dy dx here, 6, and I wanted it at 10. Okay, if I try to do that, it's going to say, uh-uh, because why? My graph only goes till 3. You have to be able to see the value to do the derivative in the graph. Okay? Good. Next one. Yes? You could have looked at the graph. I just didn't want to, but you could have just looked at it. Now, you need to state if it's positive or negative on your paper. If you just say it's positive, I don't know that they would have given you full credit for that. Yeah, of course. For the bottom part? Yes, ma'am. Because <coughs> mm -hmm. we don't have a graph of G. G has the integral in it, so it's like we can't graph that in our calculator anyway. Okay? And actually, do you want to know something funny? It's not really funny, but you actually could, I think, graph that in the calculator, but it'll take like 10 minutes to graph. If you put the upper bound of the integral as an X. Pretty crazy. Will you set huh? Yeah, it goes like super, super slow. All right, ready? Um, okay. Next one. Okay, type in your equation right here. Okay, and the first thing that I'm going to highlight is that it says that R of T is the rate that people enter an auditorium. And it's in people per hour. It says that right here. 
R of T is measured in people per hour. So this is already a rate or a derivative. And you should immediately, when you see R of T, know that it's a rate. Also notice that it says we're only looking on what interval that I can go ahead and modify. Okay, zero to two. So I'm going to adjust that as well. Now, my Y min and max, I might need to expand. I'm not really sure. I'm going to graph it first and then see if I can see anything. Okay, so obviously this is not a good window. I can just barely see a sliver of it. How could I know how high up to go? What could you use? Okay, you can zoom out. I would just look at the table and see what your Y values are. So if I look at the table, I'm in the 30s for whatever reason. Okay, but if I go back to 0 and 2, just see what your numbers are close to, and that will give you a good estimate of how big it needs to go. So if my 2 is 120 and my 1 is 705, I need to be at least at a 700, right? So for my window, I'm going to make it from 0 to 800. And then just see if I can do it from there okay but your table is a really good helper for you kind of pinpointing how you want your graph to look now I barely cut the top of my graph off so I'm gonna maybe go up to we'll just say 900 so I looked at the table and I saw that the y value went up to 705 and then I just kind of estimated up because I know that's not the max, but I know that it at least goes to 700, then I need to go a little bit higher than that. So now, guys, I'm changing it to 900. Okay? So it goes up, then it goes down. There's my graph. Okay? So part A said, how many people are in the auditorium when the concert begins? So it says, the doors close and the concert begins at 2. Now, if this is people per hour, how will I know how many people came in? What do I need to do? A derivative or an integral? A derivative will be people per hour squared. Is that what we want? We want people. That means we need to do an integral. From when to when? Zero to two. Very good. So for part A, I'm going to integrate people per hour from zero to two. And I'm going to use the function name R of T because I don't want to re-have to type it all in. And then you can do the integral in the calculator or in the graph. It doesn't matter. So I'm going to do it here. Second trace. Option 7 is the antiderivative. So I'm going to go down to option 7. And then I'm going to go from lower limit 0 to upper limit 2. And then it'll shade it in for you, show you that it's calculating the area. 980 people entered the auditorium. Yes. Because it's a slope. Oh. Remember, if it's meters per second, what's the derivative of that? Meters per second squared. What's the integral of that? Meters. So that's where I would let your units kind of help you with that. Now, one other thing that's important. This is how many people entered the auditorium. Could there have already been people in the auditorium? There could be, but what does it say right here? No one is in the auditorium at zero. So that's how I know these are my only people in there because there wasn't anybody in there already, right? Okay, part B. Find the time when the rate that people entered the auditorium is a max. Now, they want to know the max of when the rate is the biggest. So if I'm looking at my graph here, I just want to know when this rate is the highest. Well, then what am I going to find? Second trace, I'm going to choose the max. Okay, I want to know when my rate is the biggest. And then I'm going to just go from 0 to 2, because since I've already shaded my graph, I don't want to do the little cursor thing. Okay, it asks me to guess. I don't want to, so I skip it. Okay, the max occurs at 1.3629. That's just the max of the graph. Because they're asking me for the max rate, and I graphed the rate already. So I'm just looking at the max of this graph in my calculator. So just the uh huh. So it would be t equals 1.3629.
And then it says justify your answer. Okay, so I'm going to put this is a relative max. Actually, thank you. Let's not even say relative max. Let's say absolute max. Because. Now, what is in my calculator? What function? It's labeled with a what? An R. What happens at this point that makes it the biggest? What changes sign? The slope, which is called what? R prime. So because R prime of T changes from plus to minus. Now, I want to just go back over something with you. So we used to, when we did this, we would say it's a relative max, but to prove that it's the absolute max, you have to compare it to the y values, unless there's only one critical number. Is this the only max in the graph? Yes, then you automatically know that it's the winner. Because if it goes up and then it goes down and it doesn't do anything else, that point has to be the biggest. So I'm going to put it's the absolute max because our prime changes plus to minus and there are no other critical numbers. Could you just that? Um, it just depends. Some years they've taken it without that and sometimes they've required it. So that's where I would say practice like it's going to be graded really strictly. Okay. Um, that's what I was just saying is some years they've required it, some years they haven't, so I wouldn't super stress out about it. Um, okay, look at part C. Yes. I think if you didn't say absolute, you'd be fine, but I think they probably would have wanted to see this. because, And this is why. What is this part the definition of? A relative max. So if you're trying to claim that it's the biggest, they're meaning absolute. And they won't always use that word. If they're talking about relative or local, you only have to justify a sign change. But if they're wanting the real max, you have to state there's a sign change and it's the biggest. Okay, but if it's the only one, then that work is done for you. If it wasn't the only one, you'd have to do a, a candidate's chart, right? Okay. Um, all right, just to avoid getting confusing, I'm going to skip C and D and go to the next one. Um, keep in mind that on your AP test, you're going to have parts that are easy, parts that are hard. You should at least do the easy parts um, before quitting. Okay, I want to have time to look at this one. So skip that next one and go to this one. Okay, we're going to cover this more in depth later, but one of the things the AP le test likes to do is give you problems with two rates. So look what it says. The rate that water flows into the drain pipe is R of T. Okay, but the pipe is partially blocked, allowing water to drain out at this other thing. So we have water coming in at R of T equals 20 sine t squared over 35. But then we have water going out negative 0.04 t cubed 0.4 t squared 0.96 t. So there are two things that are going on. You have water coming in. You have water coming out. They've also done this with people going into the auditorium and people going out. So you have to check both things. Okay, so part A says... How many cubic feet of rainwater go into the pipe? Which one am I going to do? The in or the out? R or the other function? Okay, the in function. I forgot to label it, but it was D of T. Okay, so for part A, all that I care about is the integral from when to when? 0 to 8. 8 to 12. And then I'm only going to integrate my R of T dt. So go ahead and type that in. Integrate it in your calculator. That's going to be your answer for part A. And actually, if you want to, go ahead and type both of them in. Okay, good question. So the units for this this is the rate that water is flowing in in cubic feet per hour. So if I want to know how many cubic feet, that's an integral. 
Because think about it, if I'm going from meters per second to meters, that's an integral. If I'm going from cubic feet, feet per hour to cubic feet, that's an integral too. Okay, so I have them typed in here. Okay, then I'm going to do math 9, 0 to 8. And then remember that I'm only using my y1 function for the first integral. So I got 76, 5, 7, 0, 3. Now, what would the units for that be if I just integrated a cubic feet per hour? cubic feet or feet cubed. Good. Now it doesn't say indicate units of measure, but think about it. Is that how water would be measured? Sure. It's cubic. It's volume. Okay, go to part B. I want you to think about this for a second. Is the amount of water in the pipe increasing or decreasing at three hours? Okay, think about what two things do I have to consider? The rate that it's going in and the rate that it's going out. So check your table at 3. How fast is the water going in? So second table here. I'm going to come down to 3. My water is going in at 5 cubic feet, blah, blah, blah. But it's going out at 5.4 cubic feet. Overall, what's happening? Is it getting more or less water, increasing or decreasing? It would be decreasing because which rate is bigger? The rate of it going out, right? If I'm filling up a bathtub but it's draining faster than I'm filling it, overall it's going to be going down, right? So we would say R of 3 equals 5.0864. D of 3 equals 5.4. Then overall, what did they say? The amount of water is decreasing because the rate it's draining is greater than the rate it's filling. Or if you wanted to make that less fancy, you could say it's draining faster than it's filling. Something like that. But you're comparing the rates and saying my out rate is bigger than my in rate. Okay? Okay. Skip part C. Go to part D. I want you to try to set it up. We will do a whole day of this later where I'll teach you how to do part C. Really, you should be able to do it. I just don't want to make anybody really confused right before the mock. Yes. Okay, so it says the pipe can hold 50 cubic feet of water before overflowing. For T greater than 8, water continues to flow into and out of the pipe until it begins to overflow. Write, but do not solve, an equation involving one or more integrals that gives W when the pipe will overflow. Okay, so think about how much does it, how much can it have in it before it overflows? 50. So once it hits 50, it's going to overflow. What integral do I need to set up? From where to where? Zero till, what's my time? T. Right? And then what two things do I need to consider? The water coming in would be R of T. That's going to be a positive integral. But then what do I have to do with the water that's draining out of it? I have to subtract it, right? So I would say how much water came in minus how much water came out. How much does it have to equal to overflow? We said how much? 50. Okay, there's one other thing we're missing. Go back and read it and figure out what it is. Okay, good. Jesus said there was already how much in the pipe to begin with. Okay, it says right here there are 30 feet at time zero. So 
so I would need to put a plus 30 here at the end. So this is the amount that would have come in minus the amount that would have come out plus how much is already there. If it's equal to 50, it's going to start overflowing. Good. Yes. You could have put them in the same integral. Yes, that's why it says here one or more integrals is because you could have done them together or separate. It's kind of up to you on that. Okay. Good job. Lots to think about. We'll review more tomorrow. Okay, I'm not going to give you homework this week since you already have a hundred year long AP test. Okay. Okay.